Grappling is an ever-evolving martial art with techniques and styles that suit every practitioner. But who is the best grappler of all time? In this video, we'll take a look at 10 of the best grapplers ever from various martial arts, including BJJ, wrestling, judo, and MMA, and their achievements. Starting off with this list, we are diving into perhaps the greatest contributor to modern grappling and BJJ, the one and only Roger Gracie. Roger Gracie's legacy in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is as legendary as his grandfather's, Carlos Gracie. Born into the family, Roger began his training at a young age, but it wasn't until his teenage years that he began to take Jiu-Jitsu seriously. Once he did, he quickly made a name for himself in the competitive scene, dominating championships as early as Blue Belt. In 2003, at the Brown Belt level, Roger made his debut in the ADCC Championships, coming in third place. The following year, he was awarded his black belt and returned to ADCC in 2005. This time, he not only took the gold in his weight division but also emerged victorious in the absolute bracket. Known for his mastery of the rear naked choke, Roger Gracie's submission record speaks for itself, but his legacy extends beyond his achievements on the mat. Today he leads the Roger Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy in London, passing down his knowledge and love for the art to a new generation of practitioners. His name is forever etched in the early history of American Jiu-Jitsu, and his contribution to the sport will never be forgotten. Moving forward, we now move into the world of UFC and look at one of its biggest stars, George St. Pierre. GSP is a black belt in both BJJ and Kyokushin Karate. Born in Canada, GSP started karate at the age of seven after encountering bullies at school. After receiving his second degree black belt in karate by the age of 12, he decided to fully dedicate himself to training martial arts, with his inspiration coming from Royce Gracie's 1993 fight on UFC 1. By 16, he added boxing, BJJ, and wrestling to his training and began competing. In 2006, he became the UFC welterweight champion, and though he lost the title in 2007, he regained it in 2008 and has not lost a single title defense since. GSP is recognized as one of the planet's best pound-for-pound -pound MMA fighters and all-around athletes. In 2017, GSP fought Michael Bisping at UFC 217 after a four-year layoff. He ended up beating Bisping in the third round via submission, becoming the fourth fighter in UFC history to be a multi-division champion. In early 2019, GSP announced his permanent retirement from professional fighting after being diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, but still continues to travel the world, training under the best coaches in all martial arts disciplines. His professional record consists of 28 wins, eight by knockout, and six by submission, and only two losses. GSP is a true inspiration and definitely earns a GOAT title. GSP is one of the only fighters on our list of the best grapplers of all time to not come from a grappling background. Before Khabib, GSP was known as the best wrestler in MMA. Speaking of Khabib, the Dagestani champ is known for his grappling skills and this skill has played a big part in his success with the UFC. He's the next one on our list. Khabib Nurmagomedov is a name that, at his best, struck fear into the hearts of his opponents. However, despite his success within the UFC, he has an impressive background in wrestling, having started his training in his father's gym at a very young age. As a child, he even wrestled a bear. In addition to his wrestling skills, Khabib also trained in other martial arts like judo and sambo during his teenage years. His MMA career began in 2008, and he quickly made a name for himself in the UFC. Khabib's fighting style is known for its mauling power, as he relentlessly pressures his opponents and takes them down to the ground. He has a record of 29-0, including victories over some of the biggest names in the sport. In 2018, Khabib finally faced Conor McGregor in a highly anticipated title fight. He once again dominated the competition and won by submission in the fourth round. Sadly, Khabib announced his retirement in 2021, and after initially acting as a coach to current UFC lightweight champion Islam Makhachev, he announced a full retirement as he wanted to spend more time with his family. Despite this, Khabib's legacy as one of the best grapplers of all time is secure and he's now working with fighters from his native Dagestan to hopefully unearth the next MMA gem. Now we're going to move into the world of professional jiu-jitsu and one of its biggest names out there, Marcus Buchecha Almeida. Marcus Buchecha is a true Brazilian jiu-jitsu prodigy, and his journey to becoming one of the best grapplers of all time is nothing short of remarkable. Despite initially wanting to pursue a football career, Buchecha's passion and talent for BJJ quickly became apparent. He quickly established himself as one of the most feared competitors in the lower belts, 
racking up an impressive list of titles, including the prestigious World Championship. Buchecha's dominance continued into his black belt career, where he truly made a name for himself. His victories in the IBJJF Pan American Championships and IBJJF Worlds cemented his status as one of the best BJJ athletes of all time. He also demonstrated his incredible skills in a memorable match against Roger Gracie at the Metamorris Pro Invitational. Buchecha's signature moves, including his double leg takedown, toe hold, and rear naked choke, are the stuff of legend. His ability to execute these techniques with speed and precision has earned him a well-deserved reputation as one of the most accomplished grapplers in the sport. Whether you're a fan of BJJ or not, there's no denying that Buchecha is a true force to be reckoned with and one of the best grapplers of all time. Now let's dive into the world of Judo where we have Ryoko Tani as its splendid ambassador. Ryoko Tani, born in Japan, is a legendary judoka and the first woman to win two Olympic titles in Judo. She started her training at the young age of eight after following her brother to the dojo and showed a natural talent for the sport. By the age of 13, she had already achieved her first major victory at the Fukuoka International Women's Judo Tournament. She won her first world championship by the age of 18 and received the highest ranking possible in Judo. Tani competed in the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, where she took second place in her weight division. She went the next four years and 82 matches without a loss, taking silver again at the 1996 Games in Atlanta, and then went 12 more years without a defeat. During this time, she won her first Olympic gold medal at the 2000 Games in Sydney. Four years later, she took gold again at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, and then took bronze at the 2008 Games. She retired from competition in 2010 and went on to pursue politics in Japan. Tani's perseverance and accomplishments have earned her the title of one of the best grapplers of all time, and her legacy continues to inspire women in judo and other martial arts. Before we move forward, we'd love to know whether you've enjoyed the video so far. If so, please subscribe to Valor Strategy Grappling and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. Next up on our list is another BJJ legend. A former BJJ turned coach, we're going to talk about Marcelo Garcia. Marcelo Garcia's dedication to martial arts started at a young age when he was inspired by movies like Karate Kid. Although he initially trained in karate, he eventually found his passion for judo and jiu-jitsu. At a young age, Marcelo competed in the open weight division of competition and submitted a man over three times his size. This ignited his passion for competition and he went on to win state and world championships in Brazil. As a brown belt, Marcelo started coaching alongside notable instructors such as Fernando Augusto Torreira and Fabio Gurgel. He won his first ADCC championship, defeating Renzo Gracie and Vitor Ribeiro, and went on to win IBJJF World Championships and another ADCC title. In 2009, Marcelo opened his academy in New York City, which has become one of the top BJJ academies in the world. He has been awarded numerous black belts and continues to inspire and teach new generations of grapplers. Marcelo Garcia's achievements and contributions to BJJ make him one of the best grapplers of all time. Diving into the world of the Olympics, we're now going to talk about one of the greatest Olympic grapplers, Dan Gable. Dan Gable is an American wrestler and coach who is considered one of the greatest Olympic grapplers of all time. He had an impressive record during his college years, winning two NCAA championships, three All-American Championships, and two Big 8 Championships. He suffered his only loss during the NCAA Finals of his senior year. After college, he continued to add to his record by winning prestigious titles, including a gold medal at the 1972 Summer Olympics in Germany. He was dominant during the competition, not losing a single point in his six matches. Gable eventually transitioned into coaching, where he had great success. He won 15 NCAA team titles in the 1976 to 1977 season and coached numerous national champions and 12 Olympians. His career record as a coach was an impressive 355 to 21 to 5. Gable has also received numerous honors for his accomplishments, including induction into multiple halls of fame and being named one of the top coaches of the 20th century by ESPN. He is also listed as one of the 100 Golden Olympians and was inducted into the UWW Hall of Fame Legends of the Sports category. Due to his remarkable success as both a wrestler and coach, Dan Gable is widely regarded as one of the best grapplers of all time. Going back to the world of UFC, we have another amazing grappler from the franchise on this list, and it's none other than Henry Cejudo. 
Henry Cejudo is a former UFC flyweight and bantamweight champion who holds the distinction of being the fourth fighter in UFC history to simultaneously hold two titles, and the second to defend two titles in two different weight classes. Cejudo's grappling journey began in high school, where he won titles in his freshman and sophomore years. He then trained at the U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado during his junior and senior years, where he won the Fargo National title in freestyle wrestling while still in high school. Cejudo went on to win a silver medal for the U.S. in his first Olympic Games and claimed many more titles in freestyle wrestling over the next six years, including an Olympic gold medalist. Cejudo pursued an MMA career after retiring from wrestling, beginning his training in January 2013. He became the hash one ranked bantamweight prospect in MMA before signing with the UFC in July 2014. Cejudo quickly rose through the ranks in both flyweight and bantamweight divisions, winning both titles and defending them both. After defeating Dominic Cruz in his last fight, Cejudo announced his retirement from MMA. However, Cejudo came back from retirement last year and booked a fight with rising star Aljamain Sterling, which will go down on May 6th at UFC 288. Cejudo's impressive grappling record, including winning both a gold medal at the Olympic Games and defending two UFC titles in different weight classes, cements his place as one of the best grapplers of all time. Now we're going to talk about grappling's very own trash talker, Gordon Ryan, who is set to return to the ADCC later this year. Gordon Ryan is known for his outstanding skills in jiu-jitsu and his tendency to talk trash in the martial arts community. Think of him as grappling's very own Conor McGregor. He began training at the age of 15 and started training with Tom DeBlass, where he met his partner in crime, Gary Tonin. He then trained under Gary at Brunswick BJJ and regularly traveled to Renzo's in NYC to train with head coach John Danaher. In 2016, after only four years of training and at the age of 20, Gordon was awarded his black belt by Gary. Gordon's goal was always to become the greatest no-GI grappler of all time, and he has no doubt been very successful in achieving that goal. He has won three ADCC titles, IBJJF no Jai Worlds, and has become a four-time Eddie Bravo Invitational Champion. He has defeated notable names such as Yuri Samoes, Keenan Cornelius, Dylan Danis, Rollick Gracie, and Vinicius Trader Ferreira. Gordon achieved so much in no GI grappling at such a young age, making him one of the best grapplers of all time, despite his controversial behavior in the martial arts community. And lastly, we're going to look at the late and great Leandro Lowe, who promised so much, but unfortunately we couldn't get to see the best of him. Leandro Lowe's versatility and ability to adapt to challenges made him one of the most impressive competitors in GI grappling history. He consistently showed his dominance in the sport by winning numerous titles at different weight classes, including the Mundials, IBJJF Worlds Tournaments, Pan Americans, and Brazilian Nationals. Despite an injury at the purple belt level that forced him to develop a new style of play, Lowe was able to adjust and perfect his top game, which became one of the strongest in jiu-jitsu. Lowe's technical prowess and achievements also earned him the respect of the BJJ community, and he is widely regarded as one of the best grapplers of all time. Unfortunately, Lowe was shot and killed in a nightclub in Sao Paulo on the 7th of July 2022, at the young age of 2022. Despite that, his ability to consistently perform at the highest level and adapt to any situation has definitely made him a true legend in the sport. His eight world championship belt only solidified his legacy, and he will truly be remembered as one of the game's greatest names. And that concludes our news recap for today. Which news really caught your attention in today's video? Let us know in the comments section below.